Hello again, it's Tim Spector of the Zoe COVID study, giving you this week's update and we're going to be covering a number of issues. Firstly, about whether we have reached the peak of the number of new cases, whether it's going to fall. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, the effect of vaccinations, looking internationally and seeing how we may be reacting to the restrictions ending and what effects that's going to have on the data and be giving you a few tips at the end. So let's get down to it. The figure to remember today is this 32,000 figure that is the number of new cases we're seeing every day. And this is now pretty much all due to the Delta variant. This is giving us an R value now of one. And it breaks down in interesting ways, uh, as we'll discuss more of, but basically seeing 17,000 approximately people of that 32,000 figure unvaccinated. And that rate has actually dropped uh, over the last week by about 22%. And the rest of that figure, 15%, uh, sorry, 15,000 is made up of the rest of the vaccinated population and that rate has actually increased by about 40%. And if we take the total numbers, regardless of whether you're vaccinated or not, we're getting a, a flat line from last week. So we can definitely now say that uh, these uh, new, new cases have plateaued. And again, we see different regional pictures, so it's very hard to generalize. And this uh, west to east picture has continued. We're still seeing rising cases in the east of the country, northeast, particularly east uh, of England. And but encouragingly, we are seeing places like London uh, showing signs of, of decrease, which is a good news. Now, uh, having said that rates have plateaued in the past, I would have said they're going to drop quite steeply things are very different now and I think we're going to see a long tail and it's going to be a, a very small incremental drop-offs I would expect and that's for two reasons. One is uh, the effects of uh, the Euros and other socializing uh, people getting together. Um, I think uh, we're going to be still seeing the effects of that and seeing what's happening. It's going to take a week to 10 days to know for sure what impact that's having. The other is the loosening of restrictions and are, uh, that are likely to have a, an impact because unlike previous waves, uh, we're going to be getting doing away with a lot of the those rules that kept those rates down. So those two factors uh, are going to be, it's, it's a, a slow curve off the end. So um, I think it's important to, really important for us, help us to keep logging over the next few weeks as the restrictions ease so we really find out what's going because it is a complicated picture and um, you can see on this graph how the vaccinated group of cases, which used to be quite rare if you remember a few weeks ago, are progressively becoming what looks like the predominant cases in our data and it's also showing starkly how the increase in cases in the vaccinated group is outpacing that of the unvaccinated and it the unvaccinated group is dropping that's probably because the virus is just running out of people to infect who haven't already been exposed don't have natural immunity in those groups it also emphasizes that in this vaccinated group, we're seeing a much milder disease, and this is going to be very much the norm for the next uh, few months or possibly years, uh, in a much milder form of the disease. Obviously, we are dependent on the data on the unvaccinated group on the app, and those numbers are getting smaller, and we have to keep an eye out for that. Let's now look 
internationally, as we always want to put everything in context. And you can see that the UK confirmed cases uh, per million is still uh, pretty high up compared to uh, those around us. But the picture really has changed quite markedly in the last couple of weeks. And although we're higher than nearly everyone else, you can see countries like the Netherlands, uh, Portugal and Spain uh, increasing fast and should overtake us within a, a few days at this rate. The reasons these other countries are generally increasing uh, again is down to the very special properties of the Delta virus and slight relaxation of restrictions in most countries. And so it's sort of inevitable that there will be this, this shift that we're seeing in, in all these countries where the Delta is getting more important. And some of these countries have rather lower rates of vaccination than ourselves. And so may not be having quite as mild a disease and may be having more impact on their health services. And I think it's really important that other countries do learn from our experience of this and uh, particularly on first and second dosing as we are ahead of most countries in, in terms of the Delta variant. Now, I think also they can learn about the symptom differences in people who had vaccinations, which we'll cover in a minute. Now let's talk about restrictions lifting and so-called Freedom Day uh, for England, at least on the 19th of July, when most restrictions are going out, apart from possibly some ones relating to public transport and travel. Now, what this means is that we are now accepting that we've moved into this new phase of uh, the virus. It's not killing people at the terrible rate it was, but it's still around. We still have large numbers of people with it. And I think the number one problem uh, we're going to be dealing with is uh, not the mild symptoms of a cold or flu, but with the significant numbers of long COVID, which we're defining as significant functional problems at, at three months. And if you look at our uh, our graphs for this, you can see that we're seeing 550 approximate new cases uh, every day. It is dropping because most of those were coming from unvaccinated people. Uh, we have a, a new webinar uh, coming out on this topic uh, with Zoe, and we will be answering some of your questions, I think, on Friday, this is. And so do uh, log any questions you've got for then and uh, we'll give you an update on on long COVID. So as restrictions are being wound up, we also know that COVID hasn't gone away. There are still tens of thousands of cases likely around every day and our risks are still quite high of getting it again, even with a vaccine. I think we ought to have a few rules for ourselves and I just want to give you six tips which I think are useful and I'll be um, using myself. The first one is to respect others. Realize that a lot of people have been through a fair bit of trauma in the last 18 months. They may have had very bad COVID, may have long COVID, relatives may have died. Give them space. Uh, don't assume they want a bear hug uh, and a kiss. Uh, ask people first give them uh, uh, room around them, uh, etc. That's common sense. Second one is when you're socializing, as much as possible, try and do that outdoors or in well-ventilated spaces, uh, particularly until, until these rates come down uh, to uh, much rarer occurrences. I think that's also common sense. The third one is mask wearing, which I know is very controversial, but I certainly will be continue to wear a mask in anywhere crowded or poorly ventilated. 
where you can't keep a safe distance and that's most public transport and some of this is going to be mandatory even if it isn't I would still uh, carry on wearing them uh, the Zoe app which was a paper on mask wearing did show uh, a significant protective effect against uh, getting COVID and the Delta variant is still likely uh, to be reduced if you do wear them as well as protecting others. Fourth tip is to continue good hygiene, washing your hands regularly and making sure that uh, you don't always uh, rub your eyes uh, if you've been touching uh, your mouth and face and just keep that common sense going again whilst cases are high. Uh, number five is get that second jab. Really important, all the data is pointing to that first jab not being that great against uh, the Delta variant, really that second one. And you can now get these in walk-in clinics some places and the Pfizer jab certainly can be given after four weeks now officially. So uh, my advice is, is get that as soon as you can. And finally, I'm going to keep banging on about this. Uh, my sixth tip until the government or the NHS uh, do something about it and make it official is to look out for the symptoms of COVID with uh, vaccination that virtually everyone has had now. They are not the same as the ones on the NHS websites, etc. They are, as we're listed here, very much like getting a, a bad cold. They include runny nose and um, headache, sneezing, sore throat, and possibly the fifth one, you might get a loss of smell, but don't wait for coughs and fevers. Uh, they may never happen. Assume you've got um, COVID, get a test. And you know, ask your friends if they're, how they're feeling when they're coming into your house. So if cold-like symptoms, just tell them to keep a distance or stay at home and get a lateral flow test. Um, I did speak yesterday to a great expert on the Delta variant, Professor Wendy Barclay from uh, Imperial, and you can catch up with our discussion on this if you want to know everything there really is to know about these, these variants and how it differs from the previous ones by going on to uh, the uh, Zoe website or, or through the YouTube one, you can, you can find it all there. So finally, just spread the news about the symptoms, it's good news about these uh, restrictions easing. This new era is fine. I think we can all benefit from relaxation, but do keep logging and stay safe.